Good evening and welcome to worship. <clears throat> it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's wonderful to be with you this evening. Um, a couple of announcements that I have. If you are interested in the basket raffle, uh, Heather will be selling tickets after the service. Um, you did get bulletins tonight because our technology fried on us. And so we're getting that taken care of. Computer was doing an update, and the updates, you know, can last 60, 70 minutes. So, uh, but with the bulletins, I know you have the words for the songs in there. Please don't sing along yet. We're getting there. We're getting closer, but not yet, please. Uh, we do have a wonderful singer for us tonight as well. Also, we do know about the CDC recommendations. We know about what Rock County did with the masks. And the council is in conversation about this. We are not making any changes immediately. Uh, we will be continuing to have conversation and see how's the best and safest way for the community to move forward. And so that will be, more information will be coming about that uh, as we move forward. And so um, we'll just pass that out as we get it. I think that's all the announcements that I have for today. So we'll continue with our greeting. Alleluia, Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Hymn number 650, In Christ There Is No East or West. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one community of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find, his service is the golden cord close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whate'er your race may be. All children of the living God are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. We give you thanks, O God. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us together pray. Faithful deliverer, you have chosen us to receive salvation by faith, not by the works of our hands. Deliver us then from the law and free us from the bondage of sin, so that with our hands we might serve you in purity of joy 
and response to your goodness. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who is all goodness. Amen. Our reading for tonight comes from the book of Galatians, the third chapter. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly ex exhibited as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Have you started with the Spirit and are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing if it really was for nothing? Well then, does God supply you with the Spirit and work miracles among you by doing the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believed. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian, until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, and we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So two weeks ago, we were gathered at the Jerusalem Council, and a debate was taking place at that time, and they were debating about what do you have to do in order to be a Christian? This is the same issue that Paul addressed in last week's lesson. Do you have to follow the Jewish laws first? Or is baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit enough? Well, after a long discussion and hearing from a variety of people, the council in Jerusalem finally agreed, this is not about works. It's not about keeping the traditions, but rather, this is about faith. It's about faith in a God who sees beyond boundaries and welcomes all into his family, even if it is people who think or act or even eat differently than we do. And so our story picks up this week with Paul, writing to the Galatians once again. Now I have to tell you, the story of Paul in the scriptures is probably one of my favorite stories. Here he was, he grew up as a Pharisee leader, learning all of the laws that he possibly could. He went out and he persecuted the church. He was even the one who held the coats when they were stoning Stephen. But then he had this spiritual awakening. He was on the road to Damascus going there so he may persecute more of the new Christians. And as he was going, there was this blinding light. And as he was blinded, Jesus spoke to him out of the light. 
Why are you persecuting my church? He asked. And in the midst of his blindness, his eyes are opened. He sees that God is bigger than what Paul previously believed. He believes that God is bigger than the rules and the laws you made up to be part of the in crowd. God is bigger than the distinctions between clean and unclean. God is bigger than the barriers that we humans set up. Yes, God is bigger. And when Paul realized that, the scales fell from his eyes. And he saw how he had been living. And then he saw a world with new eyes that were filled with grace and love rather than condemnation and separation. He saw that God comes to us, forgives us, and empowers us to live our lives filled with love. And with these new eyes, Paul then entered into the missionary field, proclaiming Christ in word and in deed. Now, Paul was an integral part of the Jerusalem Council. He was integral because he was one who had stepped out of the land of the Israelites and into the mission field of the Gentile world. He preached and he taught and he healed people from all walks of life. And he also saw the miraculous ways that God was working through the Gentiles. And it was these experiences that confirmed what he had first seen on that Damascus road, that God was expanding his kingdom and doing so with grace. But this change, as in all change, was not easy for some people. There was still this belief, this thought process that this is the way we've always done it. You follow the Jewish rules. You obey the ancestors' customs. And then you can become a Christian. And that is the debate that is happening in the churches in Galatia that we are hearing about tonight. For in these churches, they're arguing over what it means to be a Christian. The Jewish Christians, they're saying, you have to do this. And the Gentile Christians, they're saying, no, faith is enough. This is the same debate that just took place at the Jerusalem Council. And so, Paul gets involved. Now, I will admit, Paul doesn't have much of a filter when he speaks, especially when he's angry. When he gets involved in the debate, he says exactly what he's thinking, and we hear that as our reading starts for today. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? What a great way to start a letter, right? And it's with these powerful words that Paul dives into this debate. And as soon we hear, it's about more than what you have to do to be a Christian. It's about what matters most. So a few years ago, my first call was celebrating their 100th anniversary, and they invited all the pastors to come back and be a part of the service. And when I got that invitation, I had all of these memories of this little church come flooding back. And one of the memories had to do with the summer that we had to repaint the entire sanctuary. It had tin walls and a tin ceiling, and we had to repaint the entire thing white. That meant we had to take everything out to the sanctuary, including all of the pews. And then after we done, We had to take all the pews back in and reinstall them. This is where I was drawn into my first church debate. Now, all of the pews looked the same, except for one minor difference in one pew. A pew had a little memorial plate 
on the very bottom of it. So you couldn't even see it. You had to reach down and feel for it. It had always been on the second, so the second row back on the lectern side. But when it was reinstalled, nobody noticed which one it was. And it was reinstalled in a different place. Now, it had been donated a number of years ago by a man because of the loss of his wife. And now when it was in Rusald, it was on the other side of the church in the far back. And the man who donated this pew was very upset. Because every Sunday he would come to church and he would sit in that pew for worship. And now he had to decide. Would he sit in the pew, but in a different place? Or would he sit in the place, but in a different pew? He couldn't do both. Worship was not the same for him. But I learned over time that worship for him wasn't about the service. It wasn't about the readings or the music or even the people that he was gathered with. Worship was about that pew. That was what mattered most to him. And when that pew was changed, when it was moved, his faith was changed as well. And that's what Paul is dealing with in this letter to the Galatians. What matters most, he asks. Is it our customs and our traditions? Is it our rules and our guidelines? Is it about who is clean and unclean, who is in and who is out? Or is there something greater? Is there something more important? And in order to draw them out of that heated debate and see a bigger picture, Paul calls them <clears throat> to a time of remembrance. Do you remember Abraham, he asks? Abraham was called into this new relationship with God, a relationship that is based on faith. And all who believe, all who have faith, they're part of this family with Abraham. And in telling this story, he's calling the people into this time of remembrance and opening their eyes. He helps them to see that what is most important is that amazing gift of faith. The faith that gave Abraham the strength to follow God wherever he was led. The faith that was passed on to Joseph as he endured his trials and tribulations. The faith that gave Moses the power to lead the Israelites out of slavery and into that promised land. And as Paul recounts these stories, he shows the people that what really matters, what is most important, is that faith. The faith in the God who calls us out of our brokenness, out of our pain and our sorrow, out of our struggles, into a relationship with him and all of his other children, our brothers and our sisters. Yes, it is a faith that unites us as a family. And even though we may have differences with each other, Differences we see very clearly in our society and even in our church today. The unity that we have in God is greater than anything that can divide us. You see, the bigger picture is a picture of God opening his arms, pulling us in, and loving us into his family. Originally, when the laws were given, that was to be a gift of unity as well. The laws were given to promote the health of the community, the health of the people. But over time, the law turned into a disciplinarian. Do this or you're out. So the community that was once united under the law became divided and fractured. And so God came and united again doing so with his son, bringing together the clean and the unclean, the sinners and the law abiders, the healthy and the sick. 
Now, after the ascension of Jesus, people went back to dividing who's in, who's out. So Paul comes and says, don't you remember? It's not about who's in or out. It is bigger than that. It's about unity. Unity in the body. Unity in the love that God has for all of his children. And that includes you. And this unity, it reminds us of what our identity is. What is most important. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And our identity is in whose we are. In what Christ has done and will do for us. Not in status or gender or right beliefs. No, our unity is in Christ. And any distinctions that are made are human made and not God made. Yes, in this lesson, Paul is calling to the Galatians as he is calling to us, calling us out of division into unity, a unity centered in Christ. And it is this unity that binds us together, reminds us of the love we have for our brothers and sisters, even if we don't agree with them completely. And it is also a love that sends us out so that we can share it with all of creation. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hymn 496, One Bread, One Body. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, We are one body in this one, Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, We are one body in this one, Lord. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, We are one body in this one, Lord. Grain for the fields, scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. 
One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one, Lord. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. <clears throat> Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Generous Savior. You befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to those in need. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O oh God. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in the never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you may wave, nod, greet people as you best feel comfortable. <laughs> At this time, we would be receiving our offering. Uh, as you know, in the back we have offering plates. You're welcome to contribute on the way out. We now continue with our offering hymn. Number 391, This Joyful Easter Tide. <coughs> this joyful Easter tide away with sin and sorrow my love the crucified has sprung to life this morrow 
that Christ who once was slain not burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us be so bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us not from evil, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You got to stumble every once in a while, right? <laughs> so there will be packets of, for communion in the back that you can pick up as you leave. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And so may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his true grace, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn, 385, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord of life is risen this day. Death's mighty stone is rolled away. Let all the earth rejoice and say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise we in songs of victory, that love, that life which cannot die, and sing with hearts uplifted high. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your name we bless, O risen Lord, and sing today with one accord. 
the life laid down, the life restored. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news.